So, my name is Jeremy Fuller, and I work for Ribbon Communications. And uh, I'd like to give you the brief hand-waving introduction to network services. Um, you've probably seen some of this before. Um, I'll go through it quite quickly. This will allow Thin time to come back up and give you some more detail on how it has matured to the next level, and we're now looking at the, um, the, 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 the detailed specifications. So, the key thing we want to achieve uh, with network services is that um, we want to save you money. Uh, we want to save you money because by having a standard way of doing things, it saves vendors money um, by having something to work to. It also saves service provider money because they have the ability to uh, decide to move to a different vendor should the vendor they're currently with upset them. Um, so these are all good reasons why having a standard approach to doing things are, are a good idea. So for example, you might have a situation where you've had network services in deployments for many years. Those network services um, work fine. Um, they, they maybe go through an upgrade once in a while, and, uh, and you might have some new services that you're trialing. The, the idea is that they all work the same way from an onboarding and creation perspective. So what do we need? We need to be able to define what's in the network service. What, what are the components? Um, how are they plugged together? Um, and then you need to be able to manage them in terms of deployment. You need to be able to receive feedback, and then you need to be able to take action depending on what that feedback is. Now, it gave me great uh, encouragement to uh, not be the first person to have these specification numbers uh, up on the wall today because we've seen from the other projects um, that the specifications that you see here are now being actively used. Um, so that's, that's quite encouraging. Um, just a reminder, the whole purpose of this is how to get the network service from being designed in the OSS, BSS, into the orchestration layer. So as Thin described a few moments ago, we have a, 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 um, a descriptor that describes what a VNF is. It comes in a VNF package, which contains all the components. And we need a process to get that into the orchestrator, because it's, just, it's a bit like going um, to the shops to buy your groceries before you start cooking. Um, starting to cook and then go and get your groceries halfway through might not have a good result. Um, and so what we have here is a, is a, 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 um, a process by which we can onboard the, the components that you'll need for your network service uh, and then describe the network service itself. So once you've got this uh, network service on board, um, you, you, well, sorry, let's start with the VNF package. Once you get the VNF package on board, you have to accept that the VNF package is something that might change. Um, you might, for example, have a VNF package which describes um, a, a, a product that you are going to replace. Um, so you might, for example, want to stop anyone else from deploying that particular VNF package. Um, you want to be able to bring them on board, to remove them, and, and so it's like inventory control. Um, and this is basically defined within IFA 13 uh, API to allow you to do that for VNF packages. But we can't forget that as service providers, you probably own quite a lot of physical equipment, which you might be quite attached to. Um, and you might be planning to use that in your networks going forwards. Well, that's fine. Um, what we need is a, a description of that physical equipment such that I can, it can be incorporated in uh, network services. So effectively, what we need to do is find out what the connection point descriptions are. And then once we've described this in terms of its connection points, we can then load that as a, as a physical network descriptor into the system. This has been touched on before. Um, when we're describing a network service, um, we don't expect that you build an entire network service every time from scratch. You might want to have a modular approach that says that you describe a part of a network in one service, and then you incorporate that into another service. So what we have here is a, 
um, a service up here described in a network descriptor, which sits inside another service. And this service calls this service by its um, service access points, which are the, the parts on the end here. So this is where you can start to cascade your network service descriptions inside each other. And this is quite a powerful tool for simplifying the process of describing um, network services. So what's in a network service descriptor? In a network service descriptor, you want to be able to um, not have to, every time you use a component, um, to need to, unlock, to onboard it. You might onboard it once and use it multiple times from different network service descriptors. So you have this idea of um, include and reference. So when you onboard something, it has a unique reference, which you can then point to in your descriptor that effectively says, use this. And you'll see that most of the, um, the elements within the descriptor use the reference process, including referencing other network service descriptors. You have to also describe the connectivity. And this is done through a, a VNF forwarding graph descriptor. And that is done by um, describing filters that effectively build together to create your forwarding graph. So just like the components of the VNF, um, or the VNF packages that you onboarded, you also want to manage your network service descriptors. You might deploy multiple times the same network service descriptor. And so again, we have a very similar set of uh, APIs that allow you to manage how that network service descriptor is used once it's onboarded. So it's all looking good. We've been to the shops, we've bought everything we've needed, and it's now deployment time. So now we need an API that allows the OSS BSS to actually trigger the deployment of network services. The, the, the creation of a, a, a network service instance is the result of this process. So what we have here is um, the lifecycle management. Um, lifecycle management is uh, a process that, that can take quite a while. Um, if you think about it, you're instantiating many VNFs. VNF can be made of many VMs. Um, so you need a process that says that once I've triggered this, I need to be able to maintain um, visibility of how it's progressing. I need confirmation that it's actually worked. Um, so what we have here is, is a list of operations that allow you to, uh, to see how that deployment is going. Um, and then if something goes wrong, you can take some action. Um, and at the end of it, you might, for example, want to terminate the, the entire network service. So lifecycle management is, is going from it doesn't exist to it does exist to I've modified it to I have removed it. And there is, of course, many uh, defined interfaces south of the orchestrator. And depending on um, what the, the action is, um, so for example, you might want to modify some capacity in one of your VNFs, um, then there's a, a correlation between the API on the uh, interface from the OSS BSS to the actual operations. Um, so for example, you might want to uh, update your, your network service. Um, this could lead to a change of deployment flavor, um, some configuration um, characteristics, for example. Um, so the, the, the point here is that there's, there's a, a f that, that what you do at the OSS BSS basically propagates down through the, the NFE MANO system. Okay, I've done that as probably as fast as I possibly could then, so back to you.